Yellowstone National Park is home to a supervolcano that has erupted several times in the past. Its eruptions have caused devastation across the northern hemisphere, and it will do so again in the future. But when will this happen? Can we even predict when it will blow again? And why should you care? Well, today we are going to find out. Hi, I am your host and you are watching this channel. Today, we are going to talk about one of the most feared natural disasters in history, the super eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano. This is a volcano that lies beneath Yellowstone National Park. It is responsible for some of the largest eruptions in Earth's history, and it will blow again. Scientists can tell us that much, but they can't tell us when. So let's find out why that is and what would happen if it blew tomorrow. The reason scientists are unable to accurately predict when the supervolcano will erupt is because they don't fully understand how magma chambers work. Basically, all volcanoes have magma chambers below them, and these magma chambers are where magma or molten rock collects before an eruption. Now the size of these magma chambers isn't always the same. They grow and shrink depending on the amount of magma that's being produced deep within the earth. As more magma is produced, it rises up towards the surface, and the magma chamber grows. Eventually the pressure inside the magma chamber becomes greater than the pressure of the surrounding rocks, and when this happens, the magma is released in an eruption. Now normally this is a fairly simple process and scientists can pretty accurately predict when a volcano will erupt based on how fast the magma chamber is filling up. However, in the case of the Yellowstone supervolcano, things are a little different. Scientists have been studying this volcano for decades and they still don't know how its magma chamber works. There are several reasons for this. The first is that the magma chamber is very deep. It is located about six miles below the surface of the earth. And this makes it difficult to study. Scientists can't just drill a hole down to the magma chamber and take a look, they have to use other methods to study it. The second reason is that the magma chamber is very large, it covers an area of about 43 by 22 miles, and this means that it isn't a single magma chamber but rather a collection of magma chambers. Finally, the third reason is that the magma chamber is very hot. The temperatures here can reach 2000 degrees Fahrenheit, and this makes it very dangerous for scientists to try to study it. Despite these challenges, scientists have made some progress in understanding the Yellowstone supervolcano. They have used seismic waves to image the magma chamber, and they have used gas emissions to estimate how much magma is in the chamber at any given time. However, despite these advances, scientists still don't know when the next eruption will occur. All they know is that it will happen again, and that it could happen at any time. So what would happen if the supervolcano erupted tomorrow? The first thing that would happen is that there would be a massive explosion. The blast radius would be between 80 and 100 miles and it would cause widespread destruction in Montana, Wyoming, and Idaho. The explosion would also generate a pyroclastic flow that would race down the sides of the volcano at speeds of up to 70 miles per hour. These pyroclastic flows would engulf everything in their path, incinerating anything that doesn't turn to ash. In addition to the immediate damage caused by the eruption, there would also be long-term effects. The ash from the explosion would eventually spread across the entire northern hemisphere, blocking out the sun and causing global cooling. There would also be widespread crop failures and famine as a result of the ash and the global cooling. And there would also be widespread death as a result of the direct effects of the eruption, the pyroclastic flows and the subsequent climate change. What makes this supervolcano so dangerous is its size. The Yellowstone supervolcano is the largest active volcano in the United States. It is also one of the largest volcanoes in the world. The volcano is about 43 by 22 miles wide, and it is over 12,000 feet high. When the volcano erupts, it erupts with a force that is measured in the millions of cubic meters per second. The largest eruption in recorded history was the eruption of Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines in 1991. The eruption began on June 15th and lasted for nine days. During that time, the volcano erupted 22 times and emitted 2.4 billion cubic meters of ash and pumice. The blast radius was about 20 miles and the ash cloud reached 31 miles into the atmosphere. While this was certainly a devastating eruption, it was nothing compared to the eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano. The last time the volcano erupted, it did so with a force that was 2,500 times greater than the eruption of Mount Pinatubo. If that doesn't scare you, then nothing will. There have only been three known super eruptions in Earth's history, and two of them have come from the Yellowstone supervolcano. The first occurred 2.1 million years ago, 
and the second occurred 640,000 years ago. These two eruptions were responsible for the creation of the Yellowstone Caldera which is the large crater that is now filled by Yellowstone Lake. The third super eruption occurred at the La Garita Caldera in Colorado and it happened 27 million years ago. This eruption was even more powerful than the eruptions at Yellowstone and it is considered to be the largest known eruption in Earth's history. The good news is that none of these eruptions have had a significant impact on human civilization. This is mainly because they occurred at a time when humans were just beginning to evolve. However, this may not always be the case. If the Yellowstone supervolcano erupts again, while humans are more advanced, it could be catastrophic. Some people believe that the Yellowstone supervolcano is overdue for an eruption. After all, it has been 640,000 years since the last one. However, scientists disagree. They say that it is impossible to predict when a super eruption will occur. They also say that there is no evidence that the volcano is more active than usual. In fact, the most recent studies suggest that the volcano is currently in a period of quiet calm. In conclusion, the Yellowstone supervolcano is a ticking time bomb. It could erupt at any moment and it would cause devastation across the northern hemisphere. Thankfully, scientists are constantly monitoring the volcano and they are prepared to give us as much warning as possible if an eruption is imminent. As for when it will erupt again, all we know is that it will happen again. No one knows when that will be, but it could happen in our lifetime. So, let's hope that we are able to get plenty of warning. The research done by scientists to try and better understand the Yellowstone supervolcano has led to some other interesting discoveries. For example, scientists have found that the magma chamber is connected to a network of faults that run through the crust of the Earth. This network of faults is called the Yellowstone Hotspot and it is responsible for the volcanic activity in the Yellowstone region. Scientists have also discovered that the magma chamber is not just a single chamber, but is actually a magma plumbing system. This system consists of a number of interconnected chambers and pipes that allow magma to move from deep within the earth to the surface. The discovery of the Yellowstone hotspot and the magma plumbing system has helped scientists to better understand the history of the Yellowstone supervolcano. It has also helped them to identify areas that are at risk for future eruptions. One of the most exciting developments in the study of the Yellowstone supervolcano is the use of artificial intelligence. Researchers at the University of Utah have developed a new AI system that can help them to better understand the magma chamber. The AI system is trained on data from various sources such as seismic monitors, GPS stations, and gas emissions. It uses this data to create a real-time model of the magma chamber. This model allows scientists to track changes in the magma chamber over time and identify potential warning signs for an eruption. In addition to using AI to study the magma chamber, researchers are also using it to improve earthquake forecasts. Earthquakes are a common occurrence in the Yellowstone region, and they can sometimes be quite large. In 1985, a magnitude 7.3 earthquake struck near Yellowstone National Park. While this was not a huge earthquake by national standards, it was significant because it occurred in an area that is home to millions of people and important infrastructure, such as power plants and dams. To improve earthquake forecasts, researchers are using machine learning algorithms to analyze historical earthquake data. The goal is to develop a system that can accurately predict the time and location of future earthquakes. This information is critical for emergency planners who need to prepare for the worst-case scenarios. Another area where researchers are making significant progress is in the area of gas emissions. It is now known that the amount of gas emitted from the volcano is closely tied to magma chamber activity. By monitoring gas emissions, scientists can get an indication of what is happening below the surface. This information can then be used to issue timely warnings if an eruption is imminent. Overall, researchers are making great strides in their efforts to understand and monitor the Yellowstone supervolcano. The discoveries they make are not only helping to keep people safe, but they are also providing valuable insights into the inner workings of our planet. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.